FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome back. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. It's Kerry Lutz here. And a lot of inquiries come in all the time about platinum, palladium, gold confiscation, silver confiscation. Well, time to address them. That's why we've got Bill Halter here from Miles Franklin. Bill, welcome back to the show. Good morning, Kerry. Thank you. Yeah. So what about the concept of, you know, everybody's got it in their mind, 1934, it's going to happen again, gold confiscation. And you think that's a reality, a, a possibility? It's a possibility. It's, it's a low probability. And I would think if that were done, it would be gold only because silver, there's, there's just not enough silver and it, it would not raise enough capital or, or money or whatever for the coffers. So I think silver is highly unlikely. Mm -hmm. And you know, like so few people in the country now compared to 1934 own any bullion other than some jewelry. How many people really own gold coins, you know, uh, own a gold eagle or a, uh, or a Kruger and or a maple leaf? You know, it's nil. Yeah, the number I've heard is somewhere around 1%, maybe max 2%. Uh, so you're talking about a, a vast minority. Mm -hmm. And and the other thing is uh, the government's got enough challenges right now. If you saw that survey recently, Bill, 13% uh, of uh, the country has confidence in the government. I don't know where that 13% has been uh, hiding out recently. Uh, or what confidence is. Yeah. <laughs> confidence to screw up. Right. <laughs> that, that, that they've been doing a great job of, right? Uh, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, wonderful job of screwing things up. Uh, in fact, they've never been more write, effective. <laughs> I did just write a piece uh, on confiscation and, and uh, regarding platinum and palladium. The, uh, the thought process there is if gold went through confiscation, probably silver wouldn't, but let's assume that it was silver and gold. I can't imagine that platinum and palladium would be included. So it would be a hedge. Of, you have to look at mining shares as a hedge versus confiscation. My thought process is that owning gold in the ground or silver in the ground is your best hedge because that would, I would think that would spike the prices higher and that would make mines really profitable. Mm -hmm. um, the other thought process to platinum and palladium, a lot of people don't know this, but there's only two countries that produce a huge majority. I think it's upwards of 70% of the world's platinum and palladium comes from Russia and South Africa. And uh, the R and the S for Russia and South Africa are the R and the S in BRICS. That's three of the five BRICS countries right there. Uh, in any type of uh, military conflict, or if, if, if we don't even have military conflict, but the, the economic sanctions keep escalating, I think it's almost 100% bet that platinum, platinum and palladium will become either bargaining tools, leverage, or even blackmail. You know, we're, I could easily see Russia say, we're just not going to send any more to anyone other than our allies. <laughs> and, uh, and we know that platinum and palladium are essential, essential metals for catalytic converters to right. get rid of the smog in, uh, in cities in the West. So you want clean air in the West, you got to have both of them. And right now, a lot of, platinum and palladium, the other than the 70% of new production, a lot of it is recycled from old catalytic converters, not real difficult to do. Uh, that's the first thing they take out of the car in the junkyard. And right. if uh, the price of platinum goes up to $3,000 an ounce and the price of palladium goes right now, it's eight seventy five. If it goes up to seventeen fifty, it'll add couple hundred bucks to the price of a car and it'll make that scrap that much more valuable. You'll see uh, catalytic converters being stolen off of cars right and left. And yeah, they won't take the tires anymore. They'll take the, <laughs> take the muffler system. <laughs> yeah, that's it. They'll just rip it out. And uh, hey, Gary, speaking of smog, and this is a little bit off subject, but uh, when you said smog, I'm thinking about Beijing. I'm thinking about, about China. 
uh, China produces 90 to 95% of all the rare earth metals. Yeah. In a sanctioned world, if you want to call it that, where a trade war is going on, that's a big problem for the U.S. because the heavier uh, rare earth metals are, are used in uh, military application. Mm-hmm. And if China just shut that spigot off, I think there's one or two, there's one big mine in, in Canada, and I don't even know if we have uh, any sizable mines in the U.S. Right. But rare earth metals could become a problem. Yep, for sure. I uh, you know they've been trying to develop uh, some uh, rare earth mines in the U.S. Uh, for exactly that reason. I don't know how um, how successful they've been. Uh, the U.S. had a bunch, but, uh, you know, because China kind of co-opted the U.S., they stopped doing it. But, uh, you know, you're right. Uh, it's definitely a possibility. Um, a lot of smuggling has uh, taken place out of China, even though they had... Uh, they had uh, limited the amount of uh, rare earths that could be exported a number of years ago, and they just recently lost a case between the uh, before the World Trade Organization about their restrictions that they put on rare earth metals. So we'll see what uh, what happens with that. But interesting, I didn't you know, I didn't tell that there was a had been a case. Yeah, like uh, last Friday, I think the uh, decision came down. They lost it, but, uh, you know, when you're talking about economic warfare, you know, these are the kind of things that are going to, uh, going to occur and, uh, all bets are off. And, uh, when you're at war, uh, nobody cares what the world trade organization says. And, um, maybe the currency war is just the uh, tip of the iceberg here. And I guess it's something that you need to be aware of in your article. You did recommend that that you should really consider purchasing uh, in your metal metal portfolio uh, some uh, some palladium and some platinum. Yeah, maybe five ten percent uh, platinum and palladium should perform somewhat in line with silver and gold. As I mentioned, you know, if Russia and South Africa were to withhold production, they might outperform. Uh, but just look at them as a hedge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there's a certain logic to it for sure. Um, you know, there's so much going on here. Uh, we, we didn't really uh, have this on our agenda, but look what's going on in Missouri there with the uh, cops having shot that unarmed uh, black teenager. And you see like riots taking place, civil disobedience, civil unrest. And putting aside the racial aspects of it. Well, it's economic of origin. Yeah. I mean, people, this is not a black-white thing. I, I, I don't see it as a, a black-and-white thing. I see it as unrest starts and people are, are actually driving in from outlying areas to join in the looting. Mm -hmm. It's free stuff. Yeah. And that is economic-driven. That is because the standard of living is dropping. Things are getting tighter. It's tougher to, tougher to make ends meet. It's tougher to live. Mm -hmm. So, so, and it's also a reaction against uh, the militarization of, pol of police forces too, right? Yeah, I saw somebody commented, you know, we have a, have a right to assemble and, and uh, talked about what you just mentioned, the militariz militarization. Uh, I think people are angry. Yeah. Oh yeah, we the, know the that. Pot's boiling. The pot's boiling. Yep. So something to consider, and uh, you know that's a small city of twenty thousand people. Um, you know, it's not like the L.A. riots uh, that took place. I think it was twenty years ago. Last year was the anniversary of those riots, and you know, hey, it it can happen uh, any time for for not so great reasons and, um, you know, for not so apparent reasons. So it's another reason that you need to be prepared because, you know, times are tough. Like you said, economic yeah, you don't reasons. Want to be out in it. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's why you need a plan better to, B. Better to stay home and not have to go to the grocery store. Yeah, and uh, it's why you need a, a plan because you don't know when it's going to break out. If it's going to break out, you need to know how to get out of there safely and um, intact. You know, you need a, a what if plan, just like when I you're. Think the, best, the best plan is not to be there in the first place. Yeah. You don't want to be in a highly populated area. I just, I'm a firm believer. Of that. Yep. Totally correct. So when we come back, talk about what's going on with, uh, with the renewed or the intensified hostilities um, going on in the Ukraine, the tensions between the U.S., Russia, China, as well as what's going on there in ISIS. Looks like we're making a U-turn back to Iraq on the Financial Survival Network. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Do you have Medicare or health insurance through your employer? If so, listen up. The health care reform wasn't written to save the health care industry or even to lower health care costs. Shoot, it isn't even designed to insure the uninsured. It's just a temporary political byproduct. Like a flat rock you step on in a swiftly moving stream, Obamacare is just a means to an end. Want to learn more about Obama's ultimate objective? Then you'll want to review our latest research presentation found on OCLies.com. In it, a health expert and industry insider explains what you think you know about caring for your health is about to drastically change in 2014. Plus, he details the simple steps you could take to save thousands of dollars per year in health costs. It's free for you to preview at OCLies.com. Don't waste time. What you don't know about the health care reform could hurt you and your family. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Every day, the Financial Survival Network reaches tens of thousands of listeners and would like to reach thousands more. By adding a video channel and more show hosts, we think we can make that happen. But we need your help. If you're a regular listener of FSN and would like to help, please go to clubfsn.com to donate monthly from $1 to $100. The choice is yours, but every bit counts. There are premiums available for you, but the biggest one by far is you helping FSN get the message out to your friends and family to be prepared, hopeful, and ready. That's what FSN is all about, and that's why you listen. So go to clubfsn.com and help us get the word out before it's too late. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. We are back with Bill Halter, our friend from Miles Franklin. Bill, like uh, ISIS. Now, if you had to create an enemy that could build a coalition that could get almost anybody to support going back to a place that we should have never been in in the first place. If you had to create the ultimate bogeyman, wouldn't ISIS be it? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, these people are animals, barbarians. I mean, they'll just kill anybody in their path. Either you convert or you're a dead man. I mean, this is the perfect enemy here. These are like better than Nazis, right? Yeah, I saw a a, uh, video clip the other day of a 10-year-old girl being beheaded. Uh, and it's just sick. Yeah. So, like, uh, maybe you didn't want to go to Iraq to take out Saddam. I mean, he was evil to the core, but uh, compared to him, I mean, these guys are the worst of the worst. I don't think it'll be any problem getting the coalition to go back there and get virtually everyone on board, you know? I would guess you're right. And if you go back and you follow the money, I mean, ISIS is a splinter group from the group in Syria that we funded. I know. (laughs) Yeah. You got to choose your friends carefully, but choose your enemies even more careful, huh? Right. Or maybe that was the plan. Who knows? I just, because now it does look like we're, we're like you said, do a, doing a U-turn and going back into Iraq. (sighs) Yeah. Yeah. With uh, all the good we did in that country, more good. And the only success we had, call it that is the creation of uh, greater Kurdistan. And now that's in trouble. And, uh, you know, the pressure to go back there, it's going to be irresistible, Bill, you know? And I guess France has joined in on it, too. If France is going in there, what does that tell you? If well, Even it's, France. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a coalition. Yeah. You, you, nobody's going to be able to say no because <laughs> the evil that's going on there, I mean, it's just, it's undescribable. But getting back to the confrontation between Russia and the U.S. over the Ukraine here. Um, 
you know, what's going to happen next there, Bill? Well, it seems to me, uh, and this is not immediate, but longer term, it seems to me that uh, this is this is Vladimir Putin playing a good good game of chess because I think within three or four months, when it starts to get cold in in November, Russia supplies the bulk of Europe's natural gas, and that's how they heat that's how they heat their buildings with natural gas. Sure. So he's going to use that as a as a tool, as leverage, whatever, and it will not surprise me to see Germany pivot toward Russia, toward China, and away from the U.S. And if, if Germany pivots, Europe follows. Yeah, so more bad news for the U.S. and oh, bad news for the dollar, and it leaves the U.S. isolated. Mm-hmm. And don't forget, the, uh, the BRICS bank is up. Uh, if it's not running now, it'll be running shortly as far as for clearing for trade. Isolates the dollar, isolates the SWIFT system, and Europe can do business to their east rather than with us. Yep, yep. Well, either way, it means more instability for the world and uh, bad news for the U.S. and, you know, bad news for uh, for your investments and uh, for the future of the country, right? Well, yeah, for the future, especially especially if you think of it from our our standard of living standpoint, uh, we import half a trillion dollars a year worth of goods, most of which are not manufactured in the U.S. anymore. Right. So if you get an isolation of the U.S. and it, it turns out that the dollar is either quasi not accepted or just outright not accepted, there's going to be a lot of goods that we can't, we're not going to be able to get. Yeah, this is true. No doubt. And uh, instant decline in the standard of living. Right. Instant hey, before we before yeah. we end, Kerry, I did want to mention uh, there has been a huge drop in the inventory of silver held at the Shanghai. Oh. Mm-hmm. And I read uh, Cruz Jansen put out a piece yesterday that spot silver on the Shanghai is trading at a 7.8% premium over the, ne- uh, the next future month. So you've got true backwardation on the Shanghai, which is a physical exchange. It's not a futures exchange where you can you can settle for cash. It's a physical exchange where you have to settle for, for metal. And interestingly, their inventories, which were 1,200 tons 13, 14 months ago, have now dropped to 138 tons. So they've dropped almost 90%. There's only 138 tons left on the Shanghai exchange. And I think that's... That realization may be why the actual metal is going into backwardation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that. Uh, so people are loading up on metal in the Far East, and it makes you wonder what do they know? Why are they doing it? Well, and they're withdrawing it. Yeah, and I think the the withdrawing part is partly due to the scandals that they're having at the. Uh, at the various ports in China. Mm-hmm. The Qingdao port, it turns out that all kinds of uh, copper and nickel are missing. Yeah. So, so it, <laughs> it, it just leads me to believe that the people are looking at it and saying, hey, you know, I got this nice piece of paper that says I own metal, but do I really? <laughs> so the hypothecation, rehypothecation scandal is. Uh, it's a casualty of that then, isn't it? Right. And the only way to, to ensure that you do have metal is to have it delivered. Mm-hmm. And yep. that's what's happening. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I did want to bring that up because that's, uh, that's a real-time thing right now that the inventory of silver on the Shanghai Exchange has just right. diminished greatly. Yeah, that's really interesting and significant because... Uh, you know, all that inventory, uh, well, assume we have to assume that it was delivered, right? You would think so. I mean, it existed. Otherwise, somebody would be jumping up and down screaming, <laughs> you know, I didn't get my medal. Yeah. So it definitely existed and it definitely got delivered and now it's not there. Uh, what happens when that last 110, uh, that last hundred tons is gone, Bill? Well, and it wouldn't take much to clean up a, a hundred or 
you know, 138 tons is, is nothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so that hundred. That's in my head, but I mean, you're not even talking uh, a couple hundred million dollars. Mm-hmm. And the, and then the exchange closes down, or has it takes say. a holiday. Yeah, hard to say. Um, I would guess the trading would cease because if there's no inventory, what are they trading? <laughs> They'd be like the Comex, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, yeah, it's, uh, that's interesting. We we claim to have. Uh, the COMEX claims to have 175 million ounces, mm-hmm. 60 million or thereabouts, which is deliverable. The 60 million ounces only works out to uh, $1.2 billion. I mean, right. you could clean the COMEX out in a heartbeat. Uh-huh. And we don't believe that they necessarily have all that metal anyway, right? Uh, I think if you look at the uh, open interest numbers, it's, it's odd because gold, the open interest numbers on COMEX gold are at multi-year lows. Right. And the open interest numbers on COMEX silver are at multi-year and, and almost uh, all-time highs. hmm Why would that be? Yeah. My theory is that it's a, it's a trap or a trap door or whatever you want to call it. My theory is that the, the Chinese, through proxies, have bought futures. And they are, when, when the trap is uh, sprung, they're just going to stand for delivery. Right. And that will default to COMEX. Part mm-hmm. of my theory is that uh, when all of this comes about, and you, it could be, it could be when, when Germany does pivot east, uh, but I, I do believe that Saudi Arabia is going to play a part in this. I think at some point Saudi Arabia is going to say, yes, we will accept rubles. We will accept euros. We will accept yuan for oil. And as mm-hmm. it stands right now, they will only accept dollars. Right. Officially. Now, whether they've sold anything unofficially, who knows? Yeah. Uh, but I, it just, it's all part of it, it. Like I said, it's a theory. I mean, I don't have sure. any. No hard facts. Happen, yeah. But it just makes sense that uh, Saudi Arabia can see what's going on in the world and they can see that their business partner, the U.S., has not been completely forthright. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, neither have the Saudis, but that's a story for another day. Anyway, you find Bill's work at milesfranklin.com. Sign up for his daily missive. It's must reading. And uh, go to financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Sign up for our free newsletter. Working on it right now. Bill, we will talk with you again real soon. You be well. Thanks, Terry. Look forward to it. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Every day, the Financial Survival Network reaches tens of thousands of listeners and would like to reach thousands more. By adding a video channel and more show hosts, we think we can make that happen. But we need your help. If you're a regular listener of FSN and would like to help, please go to clubfsn.com to donate monthly from $1 to $100. The choice is yours, but every bit counts. There are premiums available for you, but the biggest one by far is you helping FSN get the message out to your friends and family to be prepared, hopeful, and ready. That's what FSN is all about. And that's why you listen. So go to clubfsn.com and help us get the word out before it's too late. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.